Hey friends, welcome back. Today we are going to redo our authentication to use the server-side flow instead of the JavaScript web flow. The reasoning is that at the end of the day, we are building a full stack application using Actix web. So it makes sense to do it this way. Also, in my personal app, the use case is to hold on to the user uh, access token and refresh token so that I can use it uh, like while the customer is not using the app to access uh, her or his Gmail account. And that's something that you can only do if you use the server side flow. By the way, thank you guys for pointing out that sending the client secret was not the best practice. I learned and I want to believe that now I am a better engineer. All right, so before we dive into the code, uh, let's look at how Grammarly does OAuth. All right, so let's log in. So when I press sign in with Google, I expect the server side flow to start. All right, so this tells me that they are using indeed the server flows because the response type that is requesting is uh, code. So this means that at the end of the day, Google is going to send us a code back to the UI that we're supposed to relay to the server so that the server can actually do the authentication. So let's see if that's true. Uh, let's see, redirect state, where's the code? Code, 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 all right, perfect. So this all makes sense. So this code is sent back to the Grammarly servers through this callback over here. And then what the Grammarly server will do is to get a, a refresh token, an access token from Google, and then redirect the UI to this like index page. And we are going to do something very similar in our app. Let's go. We are back at our template project, and I'm going to break down the changes that I did. Uh, pretty much, we just have two new services. So we have login and login callback. So login will be called by the UI. And here, what we are expected to do is to return the URL that the client needs to send to Google to get authenticated. So I added a couple of to-dos because we need to tie everything together with the database, but we don't have that yet. For now, what we have is, uh, you know, upon pressing the login button, the UI will call the service. And here we are expected to craft a payload to be sent to Google. So it involves like the redirect URL, the scopes that your application is requesting, the OAuth client ID, and obviously the OAuth URL. Then we just print it uh, for debugging purposes and send it to the to the UI. Then the UI like redirects the the user to go to to the Google uh, account page and where they will log in or not, <laughs> and eventually your Google Auth callback will be called. And this is where we are supposed to look at the code that we got from Google. So I parse that into this structure. So here, the code end, ends up being stored here. And we make a request to Google to redeem, redeem the, the, the code, to redeem the access token using the, the, the code and the client. I think we here is where the client secret gets involved. So we get the code from the from Google. We craft this payload, send it to Google, and then we get back the uh, the access token and refresh tokens. Um, then what we do is we create a session cookie and set and send it to the UI. So basically, we send them to the main page just like Grammarly did. So this is the server changes. These are the server changes. On the UI side, pretty much all I did is to remove the library that we were, we were using. So just remove that, li that library. Instead, what we're going to do is when we load the application the first time, in case that OAuth is enabled, we'll default to the, to the main page, right? So we go to the main page. In this case, it's called get example. And then we verify if we have a, a, the session cookie or not. If we do not have the session cookie, then we go to the, to the login page. And the login page just has like a big button that when you press it, 
it calls this the login web service on the server side. Uh, I remove all all this UAuth stuff because we do not need it. Like, <laughs> I cannot emphasize enough how much it helped just to take a step back, remove the library, and understand the process. So let's run it and see how it works. Okay, so let's test the system. If I go to localhost, it will redirect me to localhost slash login. From here, I can click on the sign in with Google button. This causes the UI to make a request to the server to attempt to log in. The server replies with this um, URL that the this the obviously corresponds to a Google uh, URL that contains all the information needed to initiate OAuth. Then the you know the customer will log in, and the server replies with this, which we are supposed to send to the server. Yeah, so this is the code that the server uses to get an access token and potentially a refresh token. So if we look at the server code, uh, yep, we did get the access token somewhere in here and a JOT token as well. Yeah, so here we have our access token. So perfect, this works and this should be a solid foundation for your OAuth login. Uh, there are, as always, many things that we didn't finish, but we can will continue the next week, like adding the um, the database integration, which uh, will be super handy.